What's going on everybody? Trudging up here in the garage with the R6. For today's video, let's talk about caliper cleaning. Let's go. Now, I recently did a video where I was coming to a slow stop with the R6, and as I was hitting the front brake lever, just a tiny bit, I could hear a bit of a squeaking noise coming from the front calipers or the front brakes, but there was definitely some squeaking going on, so you know what? I was like, time to clean the calipers. Look at these two. They're just chilling here, watching me. Where, Rollo, where are you going? All right, that's enough. Just stay, stay. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, what is the point of cleaning your calipers, and should it be a part of your regular maintenance? Brake calipers are commonly overlooked when it comes to cleaning them, even though the procedure is fairly simple. Understandably so. I mean, look at them. They're in this tight, awkward place where you can't even get your hand in or anything like that. So yeah, I can obviously see why people do avoid those. Now remember, brake dust from the brake pads has to go somewhere. Yes, some of it does come off the brake pads and then, you know, flutters into the air, unfortunately going all over everything else. For the most part, it gets trapped inside and around the caliper itself. Now that can build up and actually cause issues for later on for the pistons inside the calipers. This is why I think it probably should be a part of your regular maintenance. I mean, at least, at least once a year. Brake dust gathers on the caliper pistons, which could cause it to seize, which then obviously hinders your ability to come to a stop when pulling that brake lever. Cleaning them periodically is a lot simpler than dealing with seized pistons. What you'll need to get this job done. We'll go from left to right real quick here. Soap and water, microfiber cloth, some shop towels if you don't like the microfiber cloth, contact cleaner, some Loctite if you have some. If you don't, that'll be okay. A 3 8 wrench, size 12 socket, and some detailing brushes to clean. One thing I do want to say, I have these out. Do not use these. These are the ones that come in some Motion Pro or some brush kits. This is just hard material and hard brushes. Do not use these. This one, this one right here, this one's plastic. This one actually might be okay, especially if we're reaching in things. But that's one of the reasons why I do have these detailing brushes that I use on Model X and on the R6 on the rims. Don't get me wrong, if you don't have any of these brushes, that's fine. Just use toothbrush and that'll work just fine. In my opinion, you should always have some brake slash contact cleaner on hand for whatever reason when you're actually working in the garage. And don't forget the gloves. I always put gloves on. Step number one, remove the caliper from the motorcycle by removing the two bolts that hold it on. Now, I like to actually do one caliper at a time, just less of a mess less things to actually be on the lift and also just a good practice just to do one at a time then move on to the other one step number two this is something that i do personally i grab a microfiber cloth and i actually put it behind the caliper on the bike just in case while you're cleaning it you decide to obviously move it too close to the bike and you know maybe, maybe you scratch something but this actually avoids that from happening step number three disassemble and remove the brake pads in order to disassemble the caliper you need to remove the two safety pins one is on this side one on the other uh, okay so i forgot to mention that you need nail nose pliers you can add that to the what you need to get this done job done list one out and there's a second one they should come out fairly easy there should not be anything stopping from coming out then once you get that out you can use the needle's pliers to push the pin all the way through that's the pin as soon as you do that the spring on the back pops up you put that aside and then you can actually just move your hands down and here come your brake pads so we've got our brake pads right over here. Then we've got our other separate pieces like so. You can actually take these pieces. So you can take the spring, you can take the pin and the two safety pins. You can actually throw this in the soap and water. Don't throw your brake pads in the soap and water. We can clean that afterwards. So I got my soap and water. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And that can actually soak while we get everything else cleaned up. Now I'm gonna grab a couple of rags, put them down on the lift because I don't want everything to get super dirty, especially the lift, because this does become a fairly dirty job when you're cleaning out the calipers. Step number four, since we have the brake pads off, we can now inspect them for excessive wear or any sort of damage. There's still plenty of material left on the brake pad. There's no issues with that. We will clean it and we'll get all that brake dust and road dust off it. But as you can see, enough material and that's one of them and that's the other one. Now, when you generally take the brake pads out of the calipers, check to see the orientation that they came out of. However, it's not a big deal, especially if you're getting rid of them and putting in new ones. But for the most part, we're gonna clean these and put these back the way they came out. Oh. Step number five, start to clean your calipers. Soap and water works real well. However, you will need some good elbow grease. Now you want to get into the tight spaces of the calipers and you also want to clean it around the pistons as well. But we'll get to that in just a tiny bit. But most importantly, clean off any sort of grime or dust off of the pistons that you can see. I'm actually going to spray some brake slash contact cleaner on here just to get the job started. Look at all that gut that's already starting to fall. And then just get in here, simply get in here with your brushes and start cleaning. Get that soap and water and just start cleaning. 
Step number six, after cleaning the pistons and drying them off, we are going to try and move the pistons by squeezing the brake lever. Now what this will do will actually bring the pistons out further so we can go ahead and clean the pistons a little bit more. There will be some gunk and brake dust there as soon as you see the piston come out. Let's go ahead and pull the brake lever. So this piston has come out further along with these two. This one seems to be staying in there though. So I'm going to go ahead and push the pistons back by hand. This, you should be able to do this by hand. Nice and smooth. This one and that one came out. So I pushed that one in, that one came out. Push this one in, that one came out. In. So this one's actually not moving as much as I want it to. I'm going to go ahead and push this guy back in. Now see, as soon as I started moving the pistons back and forth, there's some more dirt and gunk on the actual pistons. So we can go ahead and clean those off. Now I still want to get at this piston because that one hasn't moved at all. Don't press it too many times. Without any brake pads there, the piston can fly out and then you've got brake fluid and everything else all over the place. Uh, always be mindful of how many times you're pressing it. So that one actually is not coming out. I'm gonna see if I can get it to move. So the goal here is to have all four pistons moving at the same time. As you can see now, I have the lower piston pushed out. What I did is basically I pushed my hand against these two pistons along with my thumb on this side and I got some help from Elaine. I asked her to come and actually push on the brake lever and then that actually pushed this guy out. So I cleaned this guy off as well and now all the pistons Pistons had been cleaned and go ahead and push this back go and push this guy up back as well there we go nice and clean so again once you get that piston out or all the pistons out and moving then you can go ahead and clean them again dry them off and then we'll go on to the next step step number seven we're gonna grab all the other parts that we threw into the soapy water and we're gonna clean those off as well we're gonna get them as clean as possible at this point you can also clean your brake pads by just simply grabbing some water and brushing them off like so so we'll go ahead and clean our brake pad here first. Let's dry this in a bit right here. And there you have it. You can actually see the difference once you do clean it. Do you need to clean your brake pads? Not really. I've just got OCD about it, so I'm just gonna do it. Gonna grab our spring here, clean that up, dry it off. That's the retaining spring right there. Nice and clean. Look how nice and clean these guys are now. <laughs> Anyways, so we'll go ahead and put that aside. Step number eight. Let's also clean the rotors. I'm going to do this by using my front stand on the bike to lift the front wheel off the lift. That way we can spin it around and we can clean the rotors. Now you can do this in two ways. Number one, spray some brake cleaner on a rag or a cloth and get to cleaning. Number two, if you don't have brake cleaner, soap and water will do just fine. Again, use the rag or cloth and get it nice and clean. I'm gonna go ahead and clean my rotors using the soap and water. Step number nine, reassemble the brake pads into the calipers. And these parts right over here, which look at that, looks like brand spanking new at this point. So let's go ahead and reassemble the brake pads into the calipers. So we're gonna grab our brake pads, we're gonna put them back in the slot like so, push them up. We're gonna use our left hand and hold them like so. We're gonna take our retaining spring and then we're gonna put that on top as well. I usually do the retaining spring with these top portions on top. That's how it came off. And then we're gonna grab our pin and we're gonna push the pin through the hole and then we're gonna push it through the holes of the brake pads as well, along with the spot right here for the retaining spring. We go. All you gotta do is push down with one hand and push forward with the other. And we've also got the two holes right over here for our safety pins. So we can go ahead and put those two back on now. Usually when I put the safety pins in, I like to push them forward like so. You can grab your needle nose and just use it to push the edges all the way to the end so they don't get caught on anything while you're riding. Sometimes it won't be as easy to actually move the pistons side to side, uh, especially if it's an older bike. You can actually grab your biggest screwdriver. This is a number three flathead. You can actually bring it in between the pads and then just turn it slightly, slowly, and then just turn it. Don't do any sort of damage to the brake pads. Just slowly put it in between the brake pads and then just turn. And then that way you can push the pistons back and give yourself enough room to now put the caliper back onto the rotor. Step number 10, let's get the caliper back on the bike. Now the caliper is on the rotor, we're going to grab our two bolts and put it back on the caliper like it was. However, some mechanics or shops like to use some red Loctite or thread locker on these bolts to keep them from backing out on their own. Now I specifically do like to use red Loctite on these, but you don't want these to back out any time, so the thread locker actually works really well. Now what's the reason to use Loctite? The Loctite cures in very tight gaps, preventing the bolt from coming loose and it keeps the threads from rusting. So I'm just gonna do that like so. Put a little bit on the thread. That's all you need to be honest with you. So I just put the bolt and start threading it on. It's actually gonna go all over it and disperse all over the actual threads. That this guy on hand tight for now. If you guys wanna learn more about Loctite or Thread Locker and why it's good to use, I'll put a video link down in the description below. All right, so at this point, we're just hand tight. 
Now, if you don't necessarily have a Loctite, guys, it's not the end of the world. If you look at the bolts, they come from factory with the red Loctite on them. You can literally just put them back on and you'll be okay. However, I would periodically keep checking to see just to make sure that those don't come loose. Step number 11, let's go ahead and now properly seat the caliper to the rotors. You take the bolt, you thread it all the way in by hand. Then what you need to do is turn it back like a quarter or a half turn so there is some wiggle room with the caliper. Go ahead and do that for both bolts. So all the way in and then a quarter to a half turn back. So what are we doing here? We are going to center the brake pads onto the rotor. Step number 12, we're gonna pump the lever to get the pistons to push on the brake pads, which then in turn pushes the brake pads up onto the rotors. Do this while these bolts are actually a bit loose until you have some good pressure at the brake lever. Pull on the brake, so again, right now, no pressure. There's no pressure on the brake lever, and there it is. There is the pressure. I can't push it any further in, so at this point, we have good seating from the brake pads onto the rotor. Step number 13, while holding the brake lever, we are going to tighten the two bolts. Now, I don't have anyone here to help me, and you might not either, but all I did was actually use a bungee cord to pull on the brake lever, and now I'm gonna come over here, and we're gonna go ahead and tighten these two bolts. So we're gonna actually go ahead and tighten down the two bolts to the required specs. For the R6, it is 26 foot-pounds for the front. I'll go ahead and actually put the torque specs for the front and rear down in the description below. Always, and I mean always, check your bike's service slash owner's manual for the torque specs specified for your bike. Step number 14, we're gonna do a final wipe down and clean the outer caliper and different parts surrounding the caliper just to make sure everything's nice and clean. Now all you gotta do is repeat these steps for all your calipers and you're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the right side caliper, clean that one and then jump to the rear and clean that one as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. These steps help you to clean your calipers and stay safe while you're riding. If you enjoyed this video guys, hit that like button, smash it, smash that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that notification bell for future videos with the R6. Until the next one.